And then it's dramatically changed from there. So we got 1.7 billion. That was actually before the pandemic. So I don't know what exactly happened in 2019. That's an interesting one. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're having a look at Disney. Disney obviously being one of the strongest brands in the world. I'll go through my nine point checklist like I do for all of the companies. I'll give you my opinion at the end and we'll give it a valuation too. So let's jump in. Now I want you to stay with me through this video because when I go through the financials in my nine point checklist, it reveals a pretty interesting story about what's going on at Disney. So look, stay with me here and we will hopefully get a fair bit more understanding of what's actually going on by looking at the numbers. But firstly, like I said before, it's one of the strongest brands in the world. It has actually a $320 billion market cap at the moment. So as you can see by the stock price, it has, it has really, like the pandemic happened you know, a year ago and the share price did fall a lot dramatically then, obviously because the theme parks were gonna be closing, but with Disney Plus being a big success, well, that's held them afloat and the stock price has reflected that. It's been about an 8x return over the past 20 years. It's about 11% per annum CAGR. So look, it's been a fantastic investment for a lot of people for a long time. And we'll see whether we think that could continue. Now, first up is revenue growth. So to do that, I go look back at the past 10 years. So from 2011, it was 40 billion. Now it's about, it's gonna be about 63 billion. So that has been growing over that period of time. The last few years, 2019, 2020, like 2021, is going to be have declined a little bit, um, but not as dramatic as with if it didn't have Disney Plus. So we will give revenue growth a tick over the past decade. Now we go look at the gross margins. This will be important because a decline in gross margins mean that the business is struggling for whatever reason. And even though uh, Disney has a, a very strong brand and probably a, a quite a good competitive advantage. Look, their, their gross margins have been declining pretty heavily the past three or, four, three or four years. The pandemic obviously has been affecting their gross margins dramatically. So they probably will get back to this 45% gross margin level when the world gets back to normal, we think. But again, that's an assumption. We don't really know. So since then, it's, it's down nearly at 30%. So that's a bit of a problem, I would say. And we are hoping that it comes back, but it's not necessarily going to be the case. Now we look at return on invested capital. So essentially how good the management team have been investing into new projects and new things to generate more money. So return on invested capital here has been, well, it's been double digits all the way up to 2020. And 2020, 2021 is going to be nearly zero essentially. So look, that's obviously pandemic related. It's probably going to get back to these points if the world goes back to normal. But again, that's an if. Now we're going to look at the debt of the business. And what I want to see here is the current assets significantly more than the current liabilities. So we've got $34 billion worth of current assets compared to $27 billion in current liabilities. That's not a big margin of safety there. They do have more, which is fine. So they probably don't need to raise money or uh, sell off some of their long-term assets that they have. They do have a lot of long-term assets, as you can see here. So they're probably in a quite a strong financial position at the moment. But I do know it's because they actually have issued some more stock in the past year or two. So that's got their current assets back up to above their current liabilities. So it has actually been a problem in the most recent past. But because they've solved that problem now, I think we can give them a tick and we'll we'll keep going. Free cash flow, we want essentially moving at the same rate as the revenue. Now, if we look at their free cash flow over the past 10 years, it got up to about nearly $10 billion in 2018. And then it's dramatically changed from there. So we've got 1.7 billion. That was actually before the pandemic. So I don't know what exactly happened in 2019. That's an interesting one. The capital expenditures weren't significantly more than the previous year. It was just their operating cash flow was about half. Don't know what was going on there in 2019. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. That's interesting because that's pre-pandemic. So something was going wrong before the pandemic. And then look, Disney Plus has obviously helped them stay free cash flow positive, which has been great. But there's, there's some issues here, so I don't I don't like that. If you're looking for a brokerage account, I highly recommend Interactive Brokers and Saxo Bank. Interactive Brokers in particular, there's a link in my description where you can go and play around with the demo account and get a feel for it. I've got heaps of videos on my channel about how to use Interactive Brokers. Look, it's they're stable, they've been around for a long time, they give you access to international markets, which I think is critical. Their fees are low. Look, it's not some fly-by-night uh, brokerage company like Robin Hood or Weeble. These guys are the top dog. So look, 
Interactive Brokers is, is what I would recommend and that's what I use. Now we turn to shares outstanding. We want to see this number uh, going down, if not stable. But like I said before, I've seen this going up over the last few years. So it's gone from 1, uh, 1. 1.5 billion to 1.8 billion. So look, they've been using, they've been issuing stock to make sure that they've got that current asset number higher than their current liabilities. That's what's been happening. We've been getting diluted if we were investors in this company. That's a, that's a cross. Now we look at insider ownership because we want the management team aligned with us as shareholders. So I want to go look at the CEO and the chairman and things like that. So we've got Robert Iger, Robert Chepek. Uh, Robert Iger has $100 million worth of stock. His compensation is $21 million. So yes, his incentives are aligned with us as shareholders, but that compensation is very high, 21 million compared to only $100 million worth of stock. I normally like to see this about 10 times as much. So I'd wanna see this number at about $200 million worth of stock. Therefore, it's very incentivized that the stock performs well. Probably gonna give this a cross. It's, it's borderline, I'd say, um, but I think I'll give it a cross because I'd like to see it 10X. Now I go see what super investors have invested in Disney because look, they're a lot smarter than me. They manage a lot more money than me. They've been doing it for a lot longer than me. So it would give me more conviction if I source people that uh, I thought were really smart invested in the company. So to do that, I go to Data Roma and I have a look at the list here of the portfolio managers who own Disney. And we've got Pat Dorsey at Dorsey Asset Management, fantastic manager. I have a lot of respect for him. He has only 10% of his portfolio in uh, Disney. So and then Daniel Loeb has about 5%. Tom Gaynor has about 4%. Ruane Cunniff and Goldfarb have about 4% as well. Yakman Asset Management have three and a half percent. This is a bit of a who's who of the value investing community. Seeing this gives me a lot more conviction and this is a big positive. Now, the most important thing is valuing the company because the price we pay can be a lot different to the valuation. So to do that, I use my intrinsic value calculator and I've already gone ahead and put in some of the numbers. Now, the growth rate for the next five years, because they're hopefully going with, we're assuming that the pandemic is going to subside and the theme parks will open again and they'll get back to where they were pre-pandemic. That's a big if, remember. I don't know how much the world has changed and where the theme parks are gonna be that popular anymore. I don't know, but let's assume that that is the world will get back to some sort of normality. And I've gone ahead and put in all the numbers here. Now I'm gonna, let's put in 10% here as my discount rate. This is gonna tell me, now I'm using um, a high free cash flow number as well, because I'm assuming that they're gonna in five years time, I'm assuming that the free cash flow is going to get to $11 billion. Uh, the reason I've done that is because that's what a lot of the analysts think. And if I project out some of their free cash flow and their growth and things like that, in a normal world, I think in five years time, it's going to get to this 11 billion number. So hence why I wanted to start at uh, 4 billion free cash flow. It's not too far off that, I guess, anyway. Now I'm hoping that shares outstanding number stays the same. It doesn't, we don't get diluted anymore. And it tells me I'd want to buy this. Well, this is actually not what I want to buy it at. This is what fair value is because I'm using a discount rate of 10%. It's $111. So I'm not sure what day you're looking at the stock price, but that's what that's what I think the valuation of Disney is. You get hopefully 8 10% return on your money. Now, I want obviously more than that. Now, I also want a margin of safety. So let's go 22%. That gives me a pretty big margin of safety and a pretty decent return on my money. I'm hopefully gonna get 15% and then I've got a margin of safety. This would tell me now I'd wanna buy this at $32. Something I really wanna do though is buy this at about with about a 30% discount rate, which means I'm trying to get in the 20% range with a pretty big margin of safety. It tells me I wanna buy this at $10. Now, you're gonna call me crazy because I think the stock price is like closer to $200, but I don't really care because this is what I think the company is worth. And this is what I would be buying it at. So this is what how I would do it. Those growth rates, look, there's a lot of ifs in that growth rate. I think maybe it could only be 20% anyway. And then we're looking at like, because they have so much debt on their books at the moment compared to the cash balance that they have, I don't know, I don't know how anyone can justify 170 or 100, uh, $200 for share price at the moment when, look, I think a lot of things have to go right for us to get, a lot of things have to go right for us to even just get as fair value at $110. So look, for me, this one, the price is just, things have got out of control here. I think people have um, overestimated how good Disney Plus is going to be. And even with strong growth rates, the valuation doesn't make sense. So 
like I said, I projected it to get to $11 billion free cash flow in five years time. And that's what the analysts think as well. And my numbers still don't come anywhere near it. The pandemic obviously hurt their theme park business. And is it going to come back to normal? It's a bit of an if. The financials, the last couple of years look bad. So I'm, I'm going to assume that in five years time, they do get back to strong financials. But again, that valuation doesn't look right. The return to glory days for the theme park, let's assume that it's going to happen. They do have fantastic brands and a lot of longevity. So that's a big competitive advantage and a big moat around the business. So that's really cool. And that's a really big positive for the company. Disney Plus, look, it is great. But look, I factored that into the valuation already. And that's already successful. So look, that's what I think. Uh, I'm probably going to get a lot of disagreement here in the comments. And I'm okay with that because this is just how I do things. And I'm hoping I'm uh, showing a way that is very conservative and uh, one day my, my valuations are going to make sense um, and it's going to make it makes sense to me and I think that's what's most important. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.